five times world's best beer and the London World Best Beer Awards. expert opinion. So the idea is um, to do things as sustainably as possible and as off-grid as possible for several reasons but the main one really is to be independent. In France with heating hot water and um, central heating unless you live in a city um, you won't have mains gas so everyone watching in England this is we'll just fit a combination boiler for your heating you know you are uh, it's just not practical uh, unless you get um, a massive gas tank put in your garden but then you're subject to price fluctuations from the supplier just like everyone else and it's more expensive um, I've seen some hybrid systems where you've got gas and wood for the heating they're the best they're really good in fact Colin from French Countryside Life I'll put a link down below he has the exact same system but the downside to those is extremely complicated and if something goes wrong you've got to find someone who can fix it so what parts of the house am I going to go off grid? Uh, electricity is the main thing. Um, some form of water as well. Um, now my plan is to have water recovery from the roof. And I actually have, I'm looking at right now, a well in the garden. Which was the only water source for the house when I bought it. Then for heating. Um, a wood-fired stove which can circulate the water through radiators. Now I did do a couple of videos on the initial stages of the heating, um, putting in the radiators, the pipes, and then I also tried to run it from a 9,000 watt or 9 kilowatt source, which was which didn't really work out very well, as you can see from these videos. Um, Right, so this video is the introduction to tell you what I'm going to do, but we also start out with looking at smaller solar systems as a proof of concept. So we did a little solar system to reduce the consumption of mains provided electricity. The idea is that if this works, scale it up for this house. So. My plan is this house down south that I'm converting, which we will get back to by the way, got some videos coming on that, um, will be completely disconnected from the electric supplier, electricity supplier, and we will just run that, because we only go for the weekend, just run that from renewable solar and a generator for backup. But you'll see it all in this video anyway before I start the video let's try this that is very good good morning sorry about the lights but this will be Quite brief. Here are four solar panels I got from, well, let's just say eBay. Um, 60 quid each just for this project. Um, what we want to do really is we need to look at the details on here. Probably can't see too good. Um, we're interested in the, the uh, short circuit current, open circuit voltage, maximum current, maximum voltage. 
Um, so short circuit current max would be 5.3 amps, but more likely it's going to be running at 5 amps in full sun. Maximum voltage is the most important thing. Open circuit 45 ish uh, and 37 there. Uh, <clears throat> what that means is, let me get out of here so you can see. What that means is the panel uh, will produce around about 38, 37 volts in full sun. Uh, for the solar charger to work, it's got to be five volts higher than the battery voltage, which is 24 volts, so that's good. Can't be higher than the rating on the solar charger. So let's go and have a look at that and we can make a decision how we're going to wire it. If you remember, uh, those of you who followed the channel for a while, you may remember I did a video on installing this um, as an uninterruptible power supply for the TV and the lights in the house. A few videos back, I'll put a link in. Uh, I've made a few modifications since, and there is a reason behind that, uh, which is the subject of this video, and it's going off grid in the other house that I've got down south. The reason for that is I'm paying an awful lot standing charge and I think this system that we're going to be doing on this video will, if it works, then we don't need to have any electrical connection until the work's finished, which would be great. Save a lot of money, put it towards the build. Anyway, so I'll just show you some upgrades <clears throat> that we've done since we last done it. I've put extra batteries in. I've added this, which is a power supply for a 4G router but this one which I was using is faulty so I've got another one coming this week uh, the main addition here is the addition of solar chargers so this uh, solar charger can take 100 volts maximum and gives out 20 amps maximum to the batteries uh, charging uh, the solar panels will connect in here through this breaker into the charger through a circuit breaker uh, 30 amps uh, back to the batteries so what we'll do is make a juncture box all four panels plug into and they then go down that cable to the charger I'm thinking about where it's going to be positioned um, it's quite a long cable run so I'm going to replicate that here and then just have a look at what the, the panel does. That's it for now. Um, let's get these solar panels connected. Good afternoon. I have made this. Uh, it's a parallel connection box um, for the solar panels. So this goes in here somewhere and then the panels connect here and then on this end that comes out I have this reel of cable with a couple of plugs and then that reel will then go to the solar charger over there. So the next thing we need to do is build some kind of temporary mount for these solar panels in the garden. Um, so let's get them out and around the back and position them for the evening sun so that people can't see it from the road as well. We can do a test then, see how much voltage drop we get across this reel and so on. But let's get this outside. Okay, we've got them outside now, so we can just do a quick voltage test on them and see um, if they're all performing similar. So we're expecting somewhere around 40 to 45 volts per panel. Okay, 42 goes up a bit when I'm, or if I shade it, well, that's pretty good actually. 42 from this panel. Let's check the next one. 
Uh, I'm going to put it in the combiner box now and make sure we still get around 43 volts out of the other side. So the reason we do this in parallel, look, see even if I shade this, the change is not dramatic. So it's more resistant to shading. Okay, this is where they're going to stay for now. Uh, faffing around over there and just not, not do it today. Uh, probably get a lot of shading from that tree early on. But this is this is for the evening sun, just for tonight and tomorrow, and just see what's going on. One of the things I want to do is about 25 meters of cable, so I want to see if there's any voltage drop. Well, there will be, but how much from here to the other end? So we'll measure the voltage and see what we get at the other end. 41.5655. Just see there. Let's connect it in and see what we get at the other end. You see the cable. To here. Let's set this up. With one volt. Currently, not too bad. I was expecting a bit more, but that's good. Uh, okay, excuse the temporary nature of this, but let's have a look. So, it's off at the moment, the input's off, and you can see that it's not producing any sun. So, what we'll do is turn this on now and see what happens. Blue LED is charging. And there we go. So that's really good. Uh, so I guess what we're going to do now is. Uh, where's my dog? What we can do now is we can use these devices and do this on my phone. We can use um, use it to turn it to inverter only mode, which means it uses the solar and the batteries to power the lights, and the TV, and the computer and the media center. So let me tidy this up, and I'll talk you through how that works. Okay, so you can see on the phone the solar channel of solar charger. 26 volts. So we want to disable the grid now. So we can do that. Just in here. Inverter only. That's it. Now the grid now is disabled. So we're producing 52 watts, which is easily been taken care of by the solar. Which is good. So as long as the sun shines, the battery will stay topped up. What have you seen, Rosie? Just want to show you this actually. First year. Come on. Three years I've had those, and it's the first year it's ever done anything like that. Right, where we're at, uh, let's have a quick look. And we can see on here what, uh, what it's doing. So if I turn on the TV now, here we go. So top right. 160 watts so the solar panels producing roughly what we need it's dropping in and out of the inverter 
So we're right on the edge. So when the sun comes out, it goes up. So it's now completely been, the sun's just come out, as you can see. Yeah. So that's why we've got 200 watts coming from the panels. And as the sun goes in, that goes down. That's my four panels set up in the test situation. Uh, I'm going to keep it like that. Um, I'm going away again. No videos this time. It's just for a holiday. Thank goodness. Once I get back, we're going to head down south. Disassemble all this kit and reassemble it in the house uh, down south and then test it for the weekend and see if everything we've done so far um, along with the generator is enough to power the house down there. If it is, cut the uh, electricity supply and we'll be self-sufficient down there. I thought, hmm, we don't know what's going on there. I'm trying to work it out. Did the battery get so low the inverter couldn't start the fridge? And when the